Hello, Julia. How are you? I'm great, Larry. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm doing well. First, let me take this opportunity to congratulate you on being chosen as one of the three uh, agents of change in this wonderful award by Musical America, Thank Artist you. of the Year. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> It's a little, I have to say, all these sorts of awards and honors, it's, it's hard not to feel a little embarrassed, but I guess in just thinking about the work that I've done most recently, it feels really wonderful to be recognized, for sure. <laughs> I'm sure it feels great. And I know you've been doing many, many projects over the years. Uh, let me ask you, what have you found to be the most challenging and the most gratifying? Mm. Well, honestly, Larry, I think every every single project has its challenges and also like a, a deep sense of satisfaction. Um, the the few that stand out, I will, I'll say, at the Met Museum, even though I'm I'm so again so proud of of every single one of those five programs. Um, the one that really stands out is the Langston Hughes uh, event where there were six soloists, um, composers were playing their own music. Uh, there was the, um, uh, the choir of young women and it, mm. it just felt like a, sorry, can we just begin all this shit again? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Recording it, it flows, right? Right. You're like, you just go, 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 go. Okay. Okay. Let's start again. <laughs> Hello, Julia. Hi, Larry. How are you? <laughs> I'm well. How are you doing? Doing just fine. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Let me take this opportunity, if I may, to congratulate you on this incredible award by Musical America Artist of the Year, one of the three selected as the Agents of Change. How does that feel for you? Oh, I'm, I mean, I still have these funny moments of um, <laughs> being shy about ex um, accepting any kind of acknowledgement for my work and, and with these honors and recognitions. But um, I guess one, one thing that's just shifting in my life, I, I am, I know that the work that I'm doing is beyond that of a performer and it feels really good to just say that and yeah. know that about myself um and yes sure for for the for that to be reflected outwards it's, it's very cool well you've been busy and i know you've been doing <laughs> so many things so many wonderful projects tell me what has been the thing that has been the most challenging for you or even the most gratifying hmm. well I'll, I'll say, I think the, the most gratifying thing is knowing that the work that I'm doing is not alone. I, of course I have, you know, wonderful ideas for projects and, um, um, or programming ideas. Um, and most of it is done just through the research of looking at various institutions and also trying to reflect on the world around me and, and um, I can't even say it's sharing my insight, just trying to find a clear way to, mm -hmm. to present these reflections back. Um, but I, for the, for, the, for the times when I felt that the work is, is satisfying, like deeply satisfying, um, is when I know that there's full commitment from both the presenters um, and well, really everybody, everybody who's collaborating on the project. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, even after the performance is done, it's not the, it's not the end of the process. Um, and it's not the end of the investment in, in each other or in the communities um, that we're, we're sharing this wonderful music or this <laughs> wonderful program so yeah in that way it's like very very cool but at the same time it's like those chat the, the exact thing that makes it so satisfying can also be very very challenging um because yeah. if there isn't that commitment on the other side wow it's it's um it's a different way of um 
Hmm, I'll just end it there. <laughs> I don't know what to say with that. Well, clearly, you, you're a person that your mind goes and you're thinking and you're wanting to put stuff out there in the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Would you consider yourself someone who's driven or do you ever give your time, yourself a time to relax and let your brain take a break? <laughs> oh, I definitely take, I have to take a break and balance what I'm doing. But honestly, yeah. now when I'm like looking back on almost every every single hobby that I have, somehow it's related. It's still yeah. related to making art. It's still related to making music or somehow um, investing in, in my craft. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, I, think, I guess I'm obsessed with my job, Larry. I'm obsessed with my job. <laughs> exactly. Well, your job, Usually, you know, our job is artists and we both do this. And I want to speak on this, actually. Mm-hmm. You know, we use our art, but also using our art to kind of like go hand in hand with activism. Mm-hmm. And as of late, I've seen that you've been very active. Of course, you and I have taken parts in conversations and people have reached out to us and we're working with artistic institutions. Uh, where does this activism, the drive to be active, where does it come from? Mm-hmm. My, my parents, I'd say originally, uh, they, both my mother and dad were involved in, in various social justice initiatives all throughout their lives. Um, um, and they made it very clear that whatever work that I was doing, it needed to somehow be at service to the world. Very and good. And you know, it's like, and that, that, what does that service mean? I think that can change over time. Um, in this particular moment, it means that we are not, no longer accepting um, how our world has continued to just run and run and run without a lot of reflection. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I want to make sure that not just the pro like the 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 thing you know the the work that I'm putting out that it's it's of course respectful well researched um and but also that the way in which it is made is a reflection of that work so it's not just about the output it's also about what all is going into it behind the scenes so the resources that are being used the um and all the d- intention behind it i just i want to be very conscious about that and it's uh i guess it's sort of the next phase of this because i've been given so many wonderful opportunities over the course of my life to create and grow and explore but this moment is about one acknowledging the space and the privileges that i've had and then providing space for other artists, other creatives to also feel that they can create and explore with that same freedom, you know? Yeah. Well, people are taking note and obviously you're making a difference. And of course, we're aware that you're doing that and in the trenches. How does it feel to know that people are uh, realizing this and seeing this, seeing you as a difference maker? I'm just trying to do my job <laughs> as best as I can. You know, it's a, it's not a mantle I necessarily want to hold hold up. Um, right. But it makes it requires that I remain accountable for everything I'm doing, and for that I'm very grateful. Yeah. Because I think it's very easy for any of us to get to some level of success and feel like, all right, I've made it. And do I need to keep investing so much? Do I need to keep driving so hard? Do I need to keep asking and provoking and challenging? Mm -hmm. Um, It would be very easy to, to just, yeah, just accept and kind of, Right on, you know, but I think I, that's, you know, it's like, it's, I guess maybe that's not a part of my, my makeup and it's, 
awards like this, awards, like, I don't know if I can call it an award, it's just a sort of recognition or drawing attention oh, yes. to, yeah. Um, it's like this, it just, it just holds me accountable. And I, I hope that it holds it, you know, as many questions as I'm asking, I hope people continue to ask me all of those questions, you know, exactly. it's, uh, yeah. And, you know, a lot of the work you're doing uh, or the desire to do stuff and put it out in the atmosphere comes from a sense of frustration, I know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we feel like something has to change and then we're energized to go out there and do something. Are there things that you're still frustrated about now? <laughs> How much time do we have to talk? <laughs> <laughs> It's not a trick question. <laughs> of course not. No, it's like, obviously, our world is not in balance. Our no. world is not, and the systems that are in place, even, you know, these institutions, these cultural institutions, they don't necessarily, they may have a set of values, but are they living into them, you know? And yeah. so, Yes, I think honestly, the most in very recent months, the most frustrating thing that I have realized, you know, I, is that the um, there's there's the supremacy that we're dealing with, just in every single. It's like it's like in the fabric of every single part of our world and the racism that accompanies that the oppressive behaviors structures mindsets i mean it's like all these things are interconnected and one thing though that has become very clear over recent months is that you know as savvy as i thought i was at navigating maneuvering or even managing those spaces within our business mm -hmm. I, we are still, it's like, I, I, the, the, the moment that I ask for a little more <laughs> or the moment that I challenge and press a little harder, it is very easy to be, it's very easy to be dismissed. Mm -hmm. And so the extent of white supremacy, the extent of the delusion of white dominant culture in this business is deeply entrenched and it has been demoralizing to acknowledge that and that as again as 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 many privileges as i have i'm still very much looked at or <laughs> as not looked at i'm sorry this what do i even want to say here Oh, Larry, my frustrations. Yeah, sorry, they're immense. My frustrations are immense. And the great disappointment. But at the same time, I feel that we, we are in this moment of recognizing, a shared moment of recognize, of having, everyone is recognizing where they have failed, where they are making mistakes. And to continue to continue just acknowledging, acknowledging that. Again, it's just, it is just about acknowledgement and then saying, let's move forward, let's move forward. Because I, otherwise it's like, it's, it'll be very hard for me to continue calling myself an, an opera singer. I think I'll always be able to call myself a classical <laughs> singer because I, I, love, I love classical music, but my investment in the opera world as it currently stands, if there are not more changes that are made is going to, be very, very difficult. Well, I love the fact that you speak your mind. And anytime you speak your mind, there's going to be an opportunity for either support or criticism. Mm -hmm. How do you navigate that? Not super well all the time. <laughs> <laughs> How do I navigate criticism? I welcome it. Honestly, I welcome it because again, it's just about, it's about all of us trying to trying to get at the, the, the truth and the core. It's like, what are we, you know, 
what are we criticizing each other about really you know it's like we're just it's 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 just that we're, we're we all have such deep passion for music i think that's undeniable and for the creative spirit we all want to protect the creative spirit but we also want to celebrate diversity of thought yeah diversity of experience mm -hmm. I've learned that it's okay to upset the apple cart. You know, a lot of things that have happened in society haven't come, you know, by people being so uh, apologetic or dismissive or accepting of other things. When people have fought for things and have used their voices to really speak out is when the change happens. So uh, in my own life, I don't care if people are uncomfortable, especially if I think I'm saying something that needs to be said and mm -hmm. there is something behind what I'm saying. You know what, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And I, again, this is such an exciting moment because I feel so much of the challenging that I have done has been within, like, it's been around programming. And now, I mean, I, although I think I've, I've um, flooded my work, <laughs> I do think I flood my work with um, everything that I'm considering in just day to day life. Mm -hmm. um, I also can just like my value and worth as a creative is not just wrapped up in my performance anymore. Right. You know, yeah. and that is, that is also an exciting thing that I'm seeing amongst many, many artists right now. Yeah. Um, they, it's they're, great. yeah, it is. It's great. <laughs> you know, in, in this, in this crazy time, in this crazy time that is 2020, which all of us are like, what in the world is going on? Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there's any, anything that's been good in 2020? Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm honestly, the, the, I think we're all valuing life. Yeah, slowing down. Mm -hmm. And this, these amazing intimate moments that we have with each other, even if they're over a Zoom call or in virtual space, I mean, it still, it still feels like we are reaching out and connecting. And in some ways I feel that I'm connecting with, with people on a, on a in just making time to, yeah. to hear, hear people's stories in a more complete way, not in like a way that's super presentational and <laughs> um, scrubbed, squeaky clean. Of course. You know, <laughs> and... The pomp and circumstance, right? Yes. The whole like optics of everything, I think they mean a little bit less now that we've been forced to slow down and kind of sit and take in a lot of things. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I, I, lo I, I love that we can just be people. <laughs> yeah. We can have this wonder, you know, we have these, our deep commitment and artistic pursuits, but also like our deep commitment and human pursuits are, are, uh, we can be more authentic, honestly, mm. more authentic. Mm. Yeah. So, so yeah, everyone should be getting an, uh, an agent of change award this year. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you are one that deserves it. And so, you know, 2020 is slowly winding down. We're coming to the end of it, you know, in a few short months. Uh, are you looking forward to 2021? And if so, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to continuing making art. I'm looking forward to a few wonderful projects that are finally going to come to full fruition now. Um, on the stage and new collaborators. Um, yeah, I, as, as long as I can maintain health and also be honest about when I'm needing assistance, like I think there's so much to look forward to. Um, That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I look forward to the opportunity that we can share the stage at some point. I do too. It's been, <laughs> isn't that weird? <laughs> I'm going to say, I want to sing with Julia. And so I, if anybody is out there listening, I hope one day I'll get the opportunity to share the stage. Well, there we are. This is, this is the start. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, again, I really wanted to congratulate you for this wonderful acknowledgement, agent of change, artist of the year, you know, one of three selected for Musical America. Congratulations to you. Uh, good luck on all your future endeavors. And I know I'll be seeing you out there in the world and really just loving all the things you're doing. Thank you, Larry. Honest, the feeling is so deeply mutual, so thank you. <laughs> awesome. All right.